tonight, this shooting giving Metro Police an actual handful of investigations now, marking five since... Gun violence in Savannah. Two people are dead in a murder-suicide... Right now, Metro Police are investigating another shooting in Savannah. This one has police say that 20-year-old Malik Francis was arguing with a woman before shooting and killing... They found three victims. Since that time, two of the victims have been pronounced dead. teenagers felt that it was important to have his cell phone. So they shot him in his head and killed him. And he would have cooked for them, took them back, gave them money. All they got was a cell phone and um, put a big, big hole in our life. We buried him on Valentine's Day. Um, two days before our wedding anniversary, me and his dad. So we put our son in the ground. One of the 19-year-old young men that were killed, two of his young brothers came out. It's hard to talk about it right now. To see those two young boys, those young men, they look like they might be about 10 and 12, somewhere along up in there. They couldn't get to see their brother. They never see their brother again alive. And it's just, I picture those two young boys right now. Being on my aunt's porch and seeing it happen firsthand, you know, it's it frightened me for a second because you hear it a pop and then just seeing him drop. You just stop and think like, what happened? Then seeing everybody else just yelling, running towards him, it's crazy to know that now growing up, know that he got shot right there in front of you. Losing a kid that was real close to me, that, that, was, that was really touching to me, really, really touching to me because I actually was there when the kid actually passed, but, you know. I was there with him, you know, his mom was like, yeah, I need you to do that for me, coach, and I was in there with him, so that's, that's, that's real touching to lose one of your, your, your own kids, but, you know. I would be laying in the room, and then you just hear, pow, pow, and then you just be like, what's that? And then, you know, you go in the living room, and you be like, well, those are gunshots. Yeah, you know, that's when you know not to go outside, because you don't know where it's at. And then in the morning, when you get up, you'd be like, oh, it was just down the street. So, it's pretty scary. He was inside dancing, and, um, Depending on who you ask, it's either he stepped on someone's shoes or he started dancing with somebody's girlfriend. Um, but the ones closest to what happened, they all say the suspect pulled the gun out and, and shot him. This was in a crowded crowded house party. It was probably at least 100 people inside. It have been about 10 from North Face Chef. They killing over material stuff, like, they killing over shoes, money, like, something you could go out there and get on your own. It just, it's ridiculous out here. Your own friends killing each other. They're not just shooting at each other. While they're shooting at each other, they're shooting in the houses of my neighbors. They're shooting at the cars of my neighbors. I have pictures of the cemetery out at Hunter where we, where we buried him, and it was so empty when he died. Now you're stepping over graves because it's so full. And when you see the dates, they're young. They're young people. That's our future. We're killing our future. Every person is important. Every life is important. Every person is a meaningful individual to someone. They save themselves. They become better examples for their loved ones, their younger siblings. They are important. And we want the, these young men and some women to realize that if they can walk away and make a life for themselves, that they will improve their family's outcome for the long term. If it's worked in cities with violence like we have here, if it focuses on gangs and groups that are, you know, working together to commit a crime, um, I think it's time, and I think it's time we take a step to stop it. When I started doing some research, looking at this um, strategy, and then I met with the chief, 
number one, I was very excited that I think this is the first time I've seen a collaboration. Um, people getting together wanting to stop it. Law enforcement, elected officials, community organizations, the district attorney's office. And it's a program um, that has uh, trackable data. Everyone is tired of the violence. There's no doubt about it. We have seen people who are so upset, as am I, we're tired of the violence. Stop the violence! Police well, department is not to blame. It's the community. Are we doing enough in our community to help stop the violence? You know, are we talking enough? Are we talking to the police? Are we uh, asking them for, for their help? You know, we got to talk to them so they can help us out. And until we start talking, and reporting crime, it's gonna continue. People can demonstrate and march until the cows come home. It's not gonna help. What we have to do, we have to convince people to start talking and start trusting in the, in the law enforcement. You see, what I understand is, like, they be so quick to protest when the police officer kill, kill one of us, but soon when we killing each other, they don't, they, they don't, they don't get mad at each other. But y'all quick, quick to get mad when the police kill one of us. I don't understand. The same way you can get mad when the police kill one of us, it's the same way y'all should handle it when we killing each other. I think it's a combination of fear and maybe just, I don't know, TV, you know? I mean, there's, everybody's afraid that something's gonna happen to them or they're afraid of going to court or, I don't know where the fear comes in, but I think it's a lot of fear and it's a lot of just kind of not knowing. For me as an investigator, that's the most difficult thing of my job. It's not interviewing suspects, it's not the investigation itself, it's not evidence, it's convincing witnesses to, to tell us what they saw. I never envisioned that that would be like the hardest part of my job when I first became a police officer. When my son was killed, one of the young men that went to prison for killing him was 17, and I knew this kid. He used to say, hey, Miss Lady, to me all the time. Now he's spending the rest of his life in prison. Why? Because he didn't say anything. He didn't pull the trip, but he didn't say anything. He stood right there. If you're not a part of the solution, you're definitely a part of the problem. We know where these criminals are. We have these criminals in our own homes, you know. They're coming out of our homes. They're not dropping out of the sky. They're not, they're not coming from Mars. They're coming from our own homes. They're coming from our neighbor's home. We know who they are, but we're not saying anything. Until you start saying anything, it's going to continue to happen. Everybody wants to live in a neighborhood that's safe, uh, where they can allow their children to go out and play, where they can sleep in beds as opposed to sleeping on the floor, where they don't fear uh, shots, random shots flying through their windows. Uh, certainly, uh, there's a, an immediate and meaningful benefit to these folks who live in the communities. What we ultimately desire is to deter those who are on the loose ends of these groups, these violent groups, that they pull back and they make something of their life. If they do, will not put the guns down, they will not stop, then we're going to put them away as long as we can. If they are honest with themselves, then they're going to be dead in five years, or they're going to be in prison. We could be thirsty to pull the trigger. That trigger gonna get you behind balls. It feels good to be legit. You gotta worry about the police running behind you. You gotta worry about looking out for nobody. Cause you doing this and you doing that. Feel good to go to work, come home, go to sleep and wake up and do it again. Save yourselves. Live your life and save your community, please. Please. If we want it to work, it will work, but everybody has to come to the table. Things is gonna change. Things are gonna change for the better. I would love to see a change because I feel if it changes, people will be happier. We've got to do better. We can do better. So you got to start somewhere. And I think it's going to take everyone in the community kind of getting involved. It can't just be your problem, my problem. It's going to be our problem for us to try to solve it. It has worked all over this country and it will work in Savannah Chatham Metro. You can't stop trying. If you stop trying, we might as well all just go home. I mean, I don't understand why, why you'd stop trying. I'm not going to stop trying.